This is just a fun little idea that I've wanted to do forever. I love trivia, I love music, and in this video, I'm gonna give you 50 rapid fire music related fun facts. Next time you're out with friends, at a barbecue, whatever, hit somebody with one of these factoids and they'll be super impressed. I promise. The only member of the rock band ZZ Top that does not have a beard is named Frank Beard. Jason Mraz, the guy that sang I'm Yours, is a very successful avocado farmer, and he's a big supplier for Chipotle Mexican Grill. Dexter Holland, the lead singer of the pop-punk band The Offspring, has a PhD in molecular biology. Dolly Parton wrote Jolene and I Will Always Love You on the same day. Although he's one of the most popular American musicians ever, Bruce Springsteen has never had a number one hit song song in the USA. Bruno Mars's real name is Peter Hernandez. He got Bruno because his dad would tell him that he looked like the pro wrestler Bruno San Martino, and he added Mars because girls would tell him that he was out of this world. Freddie Mercury was born on the island of Zanzibar off the coast of Tanzania. He was raised as a Zoroastrian, which is one of the world's oldest religions, and he had four extra teeth. Elton John's Candle in the Wind spent three years on the Canadian Top 20. It's Raining Men, one of the most iconic songs of the 80s, was written by Paul Schaefer, the band leader from The Late Show with David Letterman. Donnie, the feral son who was raised by monkeys on the wild thornberries, was voiced by Flea, bassist for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Elvis Presley recorded well over 600 songs throughout his career, and he didn't write a single one of them. Toto, the group who sang Africa, was the studio band on Michael Jackson's album Thriller. When the emo pop punk band Jimmy Eat World first got signed, their label didn't really know how to market them. An early idea for their first tour was that they would play in 7-Eleven parking lots right after kids got out of school. The origin of Daft Punk's name came from a negative review of their previous band. A 1993 review in Melody Maker called them Daft Punky Thrash. The Elton John song Benny and the Jets isn't actually a live recording. Producers thought it sounded a little boring, so they added crowd noise and clapping to make it more exciting. That huge booming drum in The Boxer by Simon and Garfunkel was created by setting up the drums in front of an elevator shaft, which helped make that deep echo effect. Alright, there's too much to even say about this group, and my whole channel would probably get demonetized if I showed you any of it, so if you're interested in some dark and creepy pieces of trivia, just go down the Wikipedia page of the Norwegian black metal band Mayhem. A letter that Johnny Cash sent to his wife June was voted to be the most romantic love letter ever written. Hilary Duff was the first musician under the age of 18 to have a number one hit album in the 21st century. She was only 15 when she dropped Metamorphosis. We're nearing the halfway mark, so here's a quick lightning round on the Beatles. Around 2 minutes, 57 seconds into Hey Jude, you can hear one of the guys, most likely John Lennon, say F hell because there was too much feedback in his headphones. The Beatles did not play any of the instruments that you hear on Eleanor Rigby. The Beatles released A Hard Day's Night, Beatles for Sale, Help, Rubber Soul, Revolver, and Sgt. Pepper's in under three years. The Beatles and the Beach Boys had a famous rivalry slash inspiration loop. Rubber Soul was the album that inspired the Beach Boys to make Pet Sounds, and Pet Sounds was the album that inspired the Beatles to make Sgt. Pepper's. All three of these are often described as some of the greatest albums ever made. And John Lennon signed the paperwork that officially ended the Beatles at the Polynesian Resort at Walt Disney World. Jesse McCoy McCartney, the guy that sang the 2004 track Beautiful Soul, and Ryan Tedder, lead singer of One Republic, co-wrote the number one hit song Bleeding Love by Liana Lewis. Eminem slept through the 2003 Academy Awards on the night that Lose Yourself became the first rap song to win an Oscar. He didn't think that he had a chance of winning, so he fell asleep watching cartoons with his daughter. At the height of Michael Jackson's career, he sang backup on the classic 80s hit song Somebody's Watching Me by Rockwell. The near 10 minute long gothic rock song Bella Lugosi's Dead was the first thing Bauhaus ever recorded to 
together, and they did it all in one take. Flavor Flav was a musical prodigy. He's proficient in 15 instruments, and oddly enough, he also went to culinary school too. Johnny Cash's iconic song, A Boy Named Sue, was written by popular children's author Shel Silverstein. Blur is one of the UK's most prolific bands ever, but the only mainstream popularity they had in the US was Song 2, a track that was making fun of American grunge music. James Brown, known for his electric live performances, would have certain hand signals and noises that he would do that would signal his manager that one of the band members had made a mistake. For every mistake the manager wrote down on his clipboard, the musician's pay would get docked. John Bon Jovi's first professional recording was for a 1980 Star Wars Christmas album on the song R2-D2, We Wish You a Merry Christmas. Eric Clapton wrote the song Wonderful Tonight in frustration of his girlfriend at the time, who had made them late for a party because she was constantly changing her outfit. Gloria Gaynor's I Will Survive was originally meant to be a B-side, and it's also the only recipient of the Grammy Award for Best Disco Song. They only had that category one time, and hey, it went to one of the best ever. Lana Del Rey has a degree in metaphysics. Before Freddie Mercury passed away, he got to see an early screening of the headbanging scene from Wayne's World. Brian May said that Freddie loved it because that's actually what the guys in Queen would do themselves. The Ramones were named after Paul McCartney's fake name that he would use to check into hotels, Paul Ramone. Van Halen's concert contract would require a bowl of M&Ms with, quote, absolutely no brown ones. Because their operation was so massive, they needed the venues to come through perfectly, and the M&Ms were an easy way to see if they actually did everything correctly. Arguably Black Sabbath's most iconic song ever paranoid was made in about 15 minutes because they needed three minutes of filler on the album. The song Inagata Davida by Iron Butterfly was supposed to be titled In the Garden of Eden, but when Doug Engel first sang it, he was very intoxicated and it sounded like Inagata Davida. Dimebag Daryl, the guitarist for Pantera, was buried with Eddie Van Halen's original black and yellow Bumblebee guitar in a Kiss casket donated by Gene Simmons. After a friend of Kurt Cobain graffitied Kurt Smells Like Teen Spirit, which was a reference to a popular girl's deodorant, that's how we got the title for their biggest song ever. And then the first Foo Fighters album was made solely by Dave Grohl as a way to cope with Kurt's death. The vocals, bass, guitars, and drums, everything was performed by Dave, and he never expected it to make any kind of impact. The songwriting royalties for Walkin' on Sunshine by Katrina and the Waves are split evenly between the four members of the band. Because the song is still constantly played on the radio, and it's always getting licensed for commercials, movies, and TV, everyone in the band can still make a living off of their song from 37 years ago. The Italian composer Giuseppe Tartini once had a dream where the devil played him the most beautiful piece of music he had ever heard. He woke up, tried to replicate it, but couldn't remember it exactly. His piece is known as Devil's Trill Sonata, and Tartini claimed that he would forever trade his ability to play violin if he could hear that song one more time. Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath lost the tips of his middle and ring fingers in an industrial sheet metal accident. He didn't want to quit playing, so he created homemade thimble tips for his fingers. These thimble-tipped fingers would essentially create the genre of heavy metal. The gorilla song Dare was originally named It's There, but Sean Ryder's accent made it sound like he was saying it's dare, so they just decided to change it to dare. British actor Neil Morrissey has had two number one hit singles in the UK thanks to his work as the voice of Bob the Builder. But Morrissey, the lead singer of the Smiths, never had a number one in the UK. And the greatest fun fact of them all, Tom Lehrer was a songwriter, mathematician, and comedian that released a novelty song called The Old Dope Peddler in 1953. 60 years later, when someone representing 2 Chains asked a then 84-year-old Tom Lehrer if 2 Chains could sample the song, Tom responded with this. As sole copyright owner of The Old Dope Peddler, I grant you mother f 
Walker's permission to do this. Please give my regards to Mr. Chains, or may I call him too. I hope you enjoyed this video. All of these pieces of trivia are true, or pretty much true. There are a few technicalities in there, but who cares? Let me know which fun fact you enjoyed the most, and thanks for watching. Hey, thank you for watching that video. If you want to support the channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media at RenshawHS. You can buy my merch, support my Patreon, and thank you again. I'll see you soon.